This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Hey, everyone's heard of microscopes, right? You're looking down the barrel, you're looking at these tiny little things. Well, today we're gonna be doing the opposite. We're gonna be looking through a huge macroscope. This is a family game for two to six players. We're going to be trying to see what drawing is underneath this macroscope as we unlock different parts of it. Let me show you how I played. I'll see you on the other side. In Macroscope, you're trying to gain points of these yellow gems. Everyone starts with two of these by guessing what the picture is by looking through this macroscope. On your turn, you will roll these two dice. Then you will take any of the numbers in any order you want from this. So in this, I could, just, I could take a two or a one. So there's two ones and there's two twos to start the round. I could take any one of those off. Let's say I take this one off and I'm starting to see a drawing that's down there. Now, after I pull one off, I have a choice. I can either uh, pass, I can make a guess, or I can pull off another one. Now, if somebody else wants to make a guess and I don't want to guess, then that player can pay me two gems and they can make a guess on my turn. We'll get over what happens if they get it right or wrong in just a moment. But let's say I continue and I want to take a number one off. Let's say I take this and I'm not really still sure what that is. And at the end of my second little thing, after I use both dice, I will take, again, I can either guess or pass. Same thing, if somebody else wanted to guess, they could pay me two, and they could guess because it's my turn. Uh, when, I, when it does go to the next player's turn, I will get one of these gems for each of these that I took off, so I will take two. I would have four after my first turn. It would be the next player's turn. Now, if I did want to guess, uh, I would say what my guess, uh, everyone else can say if they want to guess or not, if it's different from my guess. So let's say I think this is a, a tree, and someone else goes, nope, I don't think that's a tree, but I have another guess that I want to go, they can also try to challenge my guess, pay me two like before and try to guess. Otherwise, it continues going around. By the way, you can play this without the dice where each player can remove any two that they want on their turn. So let's see, this gets rolled. By the way, if you roll a number and the number's not there, you can take any of them off. So this is a six and a two. Let's say the next player takes this off. Nobody wants to guess. And they have the other two and they take this one off. Do you know what it is yet? Maybe, you might know, but let's say that one more player goes and they have a five and a five. Let's say they take off the five. Nope, oh, nothing there, nobody wants to guess. And a five, oh, another double whammy. It goes to the next player. Let's say they bring off a three, and we do this. And then the player stops and says, I wanna make a guess. And again, I told you before, other people can, can, can challenge your guess if they think it's something different. Or if you did not wanna guess, they could pay you two and a guess. At this point, they say, I'm gonna guess. Okay, we count the number of um, you know, those circles here. There's one, two, three, four, five. That means this is gonna be worth five points. You place all these on there so that when you pull it out, you don't see the one below it. This is gonna be worth five points. If I guess right, it's five. If I don't guess right, I have to pay five. If I don't have enough, I pay everything I have. What did you think this was? We're about to pull it out and see. Well, if you guessed pizza, you would have been right. And then this would pass to the next player who did not, get basically the next player in, in, in turn order, and we would continue going like that. After that round, you move him to two, and you're gonna do this for 10 rounds. Whoever has the most at the end wins. Let's do one more and see if you can get All right, let's see if you can get this one. I'm just gonna start rolling a two and a one. Let's say I take this one out. Ooh, let's say I take this two out. Ooh, you got a little something in there. The next player, let's say a five and a three. All right, we'll pull this three out. Hmm. And we'll pull this five out. You guys, somebody, you might know what it is by now. Let's see, let's go for one more. Six and one. We have a six and a one. Do you know what it is by now? I have a feeling you might. Let's look at it really closely. All right, let's stop. All right, this would be worth one, two, three, four, five, six points. We would make sure those are all covered. And if you guessed, microphone you would have gotten it correct now what happens is you place these in the box just like this these are double-sided and there's 200 of them so there's actually 400 pictures so once you go through the first 200 you flip over the whole pile you put it back in here and you have basically 40 games you can play of this the one who has the most gems at the end is the winner well i went to this very excited because it just seemed so different 
And the big reason why I wanted to play this game is because when I first read about this a few weeks back, uh, it reminded me of a video game on the old 8-bit Nintendo that we used to play around, you know, dinner time. My whole family was called Anticipation. And in this game, things would be drawing an item, but it wouldn't just draw it. It would draw a little piece of it over here, then it would draw a little piece over here, then we'll draw a little piece over here. And you're trying to like connect the dots to figure out what is it drawing? And you click in and you guess. And I loved that game and it went away and I don't know why anybody's never redone it, but this is like the board game version of that game anticipation. And I was hoping it would be like that. And it is, it really feels like that. It brings me back to my childhood. Now this is a very light children's game, but I've played this with just gamers for a filler game and we all really liked it. It's unique, it's interesting. Uh, the drawings are cool. There is that strategy of rolling the dice to figure out which one you're gonna pull. You can play without the dice if you want to be a little bit more thinky. Uh, and it's just really cool. And it, and, and it plays differently with different player counts. Uh, with higher player counts, you're trying to like really get there quick and get the thing guessed. With lower player counts, you might just take one piece off and pass it to them. Because you know you're gonna, maybe you picked one way off on the side on purpose to make them pick something that's a little closer. Yeah, different strategies. Now it's not a deep, you know, thinky strategy game, but it is interesting to try to see what you think it is to hear the different guesses and then to see what it finally is and everyone goes, oh, great moments. Awesome family game, great filler, and one that gamers like too. And because it's so unique and so fun, I am gonna be keeping this in my gaming library. So let's induct it properly with a saxophone serenade. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.